we're going to talk about how to prepare for sampling success. A large part is preparing yourself with a good field kit. Step number one would be to prepare yourself. Before you leave, please make sure to wash your hands. If you're in the field and you don't have the ability to wash your hands, disinfectant, hand sanitizer, or protective gloves can come in handy. We also need to disinfect the sampling port or the hose bib. You can use bleach, alcohol, or if you have access to it, a, a butane or propane torch. Anytime you're sampling, you also need to take a chlorine residual. You'll need your chlorine kit, the correct unexpired reagents. You'll want to ensure that you've performed any nece necessary calibrations before leaving to sample. And you'll want to make sure that your sample, su sample vials are clean and ready and appropriate for sampling. If you're going out to take samples, you also need sample bottles. If you're going to take one sample bottle, one sample site, take multiple sample bottles. There's always a chance that you'll need to throw a bottle away. Always keep extras on hand. The sample bottles should be pre-provided for you from your laboratory. They will have a seal, they will have a mark 100 milliliter line, and they'll either have a powder, tablet, or liquid inside that is intentionally there to neutralize the chlorine residual. Do not rinse this out. You'll also want to have a clean cooler for water samples only. Do not mix this cooler with water and wastewater samples. And this cooler should also have reusable ice packs. You'll also need the microbial reporting form, pen to fill it out, and a permanent marker to mark appropriate information on your sample bottle. We have our kit. Let's go to the field. In order to set yourself up for success in taking bacteriological samples is having appropriate sample sites. This portion of our presentation will cover sample site selection with pictures showing you potential sites and associated best practice. One option for bacteriological sampling is the installation of sampling stations. Dedicated stations are an option for bacteriological sampling for compliance purposes and process control. Some of the pros include the ability for the public water system to control the site, locate the stations in representative parts of your system, and most of the time the stations are designed to, to reduce risk. I would like to caution you that some sampling stations, especially those installed in vaults or in meter boxes, can be prone to flooding. This can make the site a sanitary defect or a pathway contam to contamination if they're not properly located, installed, or maintained. Do you need to take a well sample? Occasionally, a public water system will need to take a bacteriological sample from a well due to assessment source monitoring that's required for an exception or triggered source monitoring that's required for the groundwater rule. In these instances, you'll need to choose for a, a sample port that is a raw water sample prior to chlorination. This raw water port is a requirement in the Texas Administrative Code. All public water system wells should have them. If not, it's a good idea to install during your next well improvement project. You'd want to follow the same collection technique for wells as you would for distribution samples. Be sure to check the chlorine residual to ensure you are sampling from a raw water well. Do you need to sample from the entry point? This is great for process control. It lets you know the quality of the water that's entering your system. You'd look for the same characteristics at a entry point sampling as you would for a distribution sample site. If you don't have a good sample port, you may want to install one during your next project. You can control the site and will benefit in the long run. Let's take a look at some good sampling sites. This one here, you can see the hose bib in the red circle, is looking good. It's easily accessible visible from the street. There's no landscaping the area of the hose bib. The hose bib itself is downward facing. There are no appurtenances, hoses, quick connects, vacuum breakers that you'll need to remove in order to sample. Also, the materials of the home are unlikely to be negative affected by the disinfection process. This is a site that you probably should include on your sample siting plan. Here is a picture of another potential site. It looks like a good option and shares many of the same qualities as the previous picture. It's on the front of the house, easily accessible. 
there are no appurtenances or landscaping directly around the hose bib. Downward facing, made of good materials. However, you would like to keep in mind that if in the future the homeowner plants landscaping in the flower bed, you may need to reevaluate. The sample siting plan should be a living document and revised as needed when new sites are needed or existing sites need to be revised. Here is another good option, sharing many of the same features. It's accessible, it's clean, downward facing, no landscaping, etc. This also happens to be located on a corner lot and can show you that you have good flow from both streets converging in this location. This hose bib also appears to be in a good location with favorable characteristics. It also has good clown clearance. It has a downward facing tap. Landscaping is not encroaching. It's easily accessible. However, the timing is not the best. If you look in the red rectangle in the top left hand corner, that sign in the window indicates that this home is foreclosed. It is not an active service connection. It should not be used for routine bacteriological sampling. It's best to choose an alternative site from your sample siting plan. This site could be acceptable, but I'd approach with caution. Although it has many favorable characteristics, like we've discussed on previous pictures, be cautious because there is that sewer cleanout located directly below the hose bib. Also, the house has plastic siding. If you are disinfecting the tap with a torch, be cautious to avoid melting the siding. Normally, this hose bib would be a good sampling point. It has good ground clearance, it's not overgrown, downward facing, etc. However, this month, the homeowner is tearing up the yard and pouring a new sidewalk. Please choose an alternative site from your sample siting plan. The potential for contamination due to windblown dirt or utility disturbance due to construction is too risky for this to represent your system. Now we're getting to sample sites that just aren't quite right. This is an example of cramped quarters. The hose bib is tight in a corner and close to growing landscaping. It is not an ideal bacteriological sampling location. This picture shows a modified tap. The hose bib is not made of the same materials as the other original taps in the neighborhood. It looks like it was added by the homeowner. Be cautious of using such taps. Additionally, the hose bib is attached to PVC, which becomes brittle when exposed to the sun over long periods of time. This hose bib is located on the front of the house and appears to have good characteristics. However, you can see on the side of the building that there is backflow prevention installed. What kind of hazard is present at this site? Was the backflow device tested? Is it functioning properly? Be cautious. The hose bib may, you may sample from could be plumbed beyond the backflow device and your sample may not be representative of your system. In this picture, you can see that the homeowner appears to have relocated their hose bib from below the window closer to the garage. The short run of PVC through the flower bed is unlikely to have been buried to a proper depth, bedded safely, and due to these shortcuts, it is likely to have cracks or breaks resulting in potential for infiltration. This is not an ideal sample site for representing the bacteriological quality of your system. The hose bib pictured here is wrong in so many ways. The water line is located at the front of the home near the driveway. The original water line has been run into the house and then redirected back outside to the hose bib. It turns out the homeowner installed a water softener, then ran the water back out so their car wouldn't have water spots when they washed it. The hose bib is also wrapped in heating tape that contains insulation which readily catches on fire and cannot be cleanly removed. You cannot practically clean the site to take a good bacteriological sample. I would encourage you to evaluate the water from hose bibs prior to adding them to your sample siting plan. Checking for household treatment, such as a water softener, can help you choose sites that are representative of your system. Process control and not compliance. There are many locations in our distribution system which we use to maintain the system. These include auto flushers, fire hydrants, and air release valves, and they are all valuable tools for process control, but they are not appropriate locations for bacteriological sampling. Also, word of warning, if significant flushing has occurred in an area, biofilm and sediment could have been scoured by the activity. It is best to delay sampling until operations in the area have returned to normal 
to ensure that samples are representative of your system. I'd like to offer a special thank you to the City of Round Rock Environmental Services Department for assisting in the development of this presentation. Now we've reached our approved sampling site. As I mentioned before, just because a site was good last month and it appears on your sample siting plan doesn't mean it's still a good sample point this month. Let's take a look. Does it still look like a good place to sample? The landscaping is still trimmed away. Doesn't appear to be leaking. No hazards, no fire ants, no hornet's nests. Doesn't appear to have any barking dogs around. Think we're good to go. So now we're gonna actually prepare ourselves to sample. We're gonna put all of our equipment to the side where it's unlikely to get wet or in any way contaminated at the site. Then we're going to remove all appurtenances and other items from around the area. We're gonna remove that hose and then we're also gonna take this caddy and move it away so we don't have a chance of splash back into our sample. So now we're ready to sample. First thing is going to be to thoroughly flush the tap. So now our tap has been thoroughly flushed. We want to make sure that we're taking chlorine residual anytime we take a bacteriological sample. So it's now time for us to collect water for our chlorine residual. Each chlorine residual kit will be different. Make sure that you follow the instructions for your kit. Also make sure that you wait the appropriate time, you use the correct reagents, and you do not use expired reagents. Our sample shows that we have sufficient chlorine to sample. If at this point in time you do not have sufficient legal chlorine, it would be a good time to do corrective action. Look at your system. Why might you not have sufficient chlorine? If you do take a bacteriological sample at this point, it would be best not to take a routine sample because this is not a representative of your distribution system. You may want to mark that as a special sample to give you an idea of what the quality in your sample, your system is like at this point in time. You would then come back later in the month and take a routine sample once you've addressed your corrective actions. However, we have sufficient chlorine, so we're going to go ahead and move forward with sampling. The next step is going to be to disinfect the sample port. Like I mentioned earlier, you want to ensure that you are not contaminating your sample. At this point in time, it would be a good idea for you to use disinfectant cleaner or put on your gloves. When you're being disinfectant, please make sure that you allow your time, the alcohol time to air dry. This ensures that it's done its job. We have several options for how to disinfect our hose bin. These include isopropyl alcohol, bleach solution, or a torch. The fastest is going to be using a torch. This, automatic, this denatures the bacteria in very small time period. For bleach, or alcohol, you're going to need to allow two to three minutes for that to actually do its job and disinfect the type. If you're using a spray bottle, make sure to spray liberally. Get all angles, including inside the hose bin, allow to air dry. If using alcohol, very similar. You can use a spray cap to spray up in and around. Also allow to air dry. Now that we're at our site, we have sufficient chlorine residual, and we've disinfected our tap, it's time for us to get ready to actually sample. The first part, we need to make sure that we can get a nice pencil thin stream of water. We want to have laminar flow and as little splashing as possible. As thin a stream as you can get. Then, our sample bottle. This is the point in time when you'll actually remove the seal. Please save this, throw it away in the trash appropriately. Crack your bottle so that the lid is easy to remove. And when we go to sample, we will simply lift the lid, put the bottle underneath the water, let it fill. Then when it's full, put the, the bottle back under the lid and reapply it. No opportunity for you to drop the cap, touch the inside of the cap, or for anything else to contaminate the cap on only water is going in the bottle, okay? So loosen the cap. Slide the bottle underneath the water. Allow the water to fill. You want to go to the curvy part. And once it is there, move the bottle out of the water 
and immediately apply the cap. Then you can turn off your tap. So, the bottle, 100 milliliter line. That is the bare minimum requirement for the laboratory to test your water and be a compliant water sample. However, the laboratory also needs to make sure that there is no chlorine residual left in the bottle. Therefore, they do a test on site to determine that the chlorine has been neutralized. That's why you provide this additional excess water so they can do that chlorine neutralization test. However, you do not want to fill it all the way to the neck. They do have to have enough headspace to thoroughly shake the sample. This is an acceptable sample and is ready to go. As soon as you have it, put it directly into your ice chest with the ice and close it. We're now done sampling, but we want to return our sampling site to the way that we found it as a courtesy to our customer. So we're going to reapply this hose. We're going to move their hose kitty back into its regular location, pick up all of our, all of our kit and all of our paperwork and take it back with us in the truck.